Here we are in the center part of the state of Israel. Ladies and gentlemen, in all of my 21 years of coming to Israel, I have never been to this place where we are right now. We are in the center part of the state of Israel in a place called Shiloh. Now, in the West, Christians would say Shiloh, but the proper Hebraic pronunciation would be Shiloh. And we know that Shiloh was where the, the Mishkan, or they say that in Hebrew, but in English, the tabernacle. The tabernacle stood here for 350 years. This was the center of Israelite worship when the Jewish people first came into the land under the leadership of Joshua. And we know that it was here from Shiloh that God raised up the Jewish prophet Samuel who would be the last judge of Israel and we pick up the story in 1 Samuel chapter number 1 we know that the prayer of Hannah took place here when Hannah was praying for a child she was barren at this time we know that Eli was the high priest. He had a couple of corrupt sons in this area. And God would raise up a godly Jewish prophet by the name of Samuel. So, of course, Hannah is in Shiloh, where we are right now. And it says in 1 Samuel chapter 1, and verse number 9. So Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh. And after they had drunk, now Eli the priest sat upon a seat by a post of the temple of the Lord. Well, we know that there was no temple. In the King James, it says temple. But it was the Mishkan. There was no temple yet until we get to the area of Solomon. But it was the Mishkan. It was the tabernacle. And of course, Eli, being the high priest, would sit upon the seat there in Shiloh, where we are right now. And of course, you know, it says in 1 Samuel 1, 3, it says, And this man went up out of his city yearly to worship and to sacrifice unto the Lord of hosts in Shiloh. And the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, the priests of the Lord, were there. So you look at that, that phrase, Lord of hosts, Adonai Hamarah. And it occurs some 260 times in the Old Testament. Eli ministered to the Lord here at Shiloh. And it was here at Shiloh that the Lord of hosts revealed himself to Samuel by calling Samuel to be a prophet to the people of Israel. So Hannah prays and the Lord answers her prayer and gives her a child. We know that Shiloh is mentioned three times in 1 Samuel chapter number 1. It says in 1 Samuel 1.20, Wherefore it came to pass, when the time was come, about after Hannah had conceived, that she bare a son, and called his name Shmuel, or Samuel, saying, Because I have asked him of the Lord. Samuel means borrowed from the Lord. So Hannah was barren and she was pretty discouraged over this. She's praying to the Lord and yet she's praying in her heart. She's praying silently and yet Eli mocked her and thought that she was uh, inebriated or she was intoxicated with liquor because he noticed that she was praying but her lips weren't moving. And she said, listen, I'm not intoxicated. I'm not drunk here. I'm pouring out my heart to the God of Israel here at Shiloh. And I'm asking the Lord to give me a child. And we know that God would answer that prayer. Then we see in 1 Samuel 1, And when she had weaned him, she took him up with her, with three bullocks and one ephah of flour and a bottle of wine, and brought him to the house of the Lord in Shiloh. And the child was young. 
Samuel would have probably been about maybe two or three, three years old when Hannah presented him to the Lord at the tabernacle right here where we are in Shiloh. And of course, we, we, we continue to read uh, the story. God would call Samuel. When we get to chapter 2, Hannah, Hannah in Hebrew, she would be so happy. She would be so joyful that 1 Samuel 2 records the song of Hannah. And Hannah prayed and said, My heart rejoiceth in the Lord, mine horn is exalted in the Lord, my mouth is enlarged over mine enemies, because I rejoice in thy salvation. And then when we drop down to 1 Samuel 2.14, And he struck it into the pan, or kettle, or cauldron, or pot, went by many names. All that the flesh hook brought up, the priest took for himself. So did they in Shiloh unto all the Israelites that came thither. But then I love 1 Samuel 2.26. And the child Samuel grew on and was in favor both with the Lord and also with men. This Jewish prophet Samuel, being raised up here where we are in Shiloh, this man had a great testimony. He was a God-fearing Israelite, loved the Lord with all of his heart. He saw what was going on. He saw that the sons of Eli, the high priest, were corrupt. They were sleeping with the women here at Shiloh. They were robbing of the offerings of the tabernacle. And yet they had the audacity to call themselves the priest of the Lord. And the thing is, Eli knew all of this was going on. And yet the Bible says he refrained from doing anything about it. He would not discipline his boys at all. Oh, sure, he gave them a little bit of a pep talk. You know, guys, I'm hearing rumors about you. It's not good. You need to stop. You're representing me. You know who I am. Not only am I your dad, I'm your Abba, but I am also the priest here at Shiloh. And so you, you guys need to stop this. Well, of course, they didn't listen to their father. So we know that they were absolutely corrupt. But this guy, Samuel, the Bible says that he grew and was in favor both with the Lord and also in favor with men. So not only was he in favor with men, but the Lord was pleased with his life. You know, there's a parallel verse to 1 Samuel 2.26, and it's found in Luke chapter 2 and verse number 52. And of course, you might be familiar with this. In um, Luke chapter 2 and verse number 52, it says, it says this, And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature, and in favor with God and man. Two parallel verses here. 1 Samuel 2.26, And the child Samuel grew on, and was in favor with the Lord and with man. And yet we see the same exact thing here in Luke 2.52 concerning Jesus. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature, and in favor with God and man. So going back here to Shiloh, we see that God calls Samuel right here at Shiloh. We pick up the story in 1 Samuel chapter number 3. And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli. And the word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open vision. So when we continue to read on in our verse number 4, that the Lord called Samuel... And he answered, He named me. I love that Hebrew word. He named me. Here am I. And he ran unto Eli and said, He named me. Here am I. For thou callest me. And he said, I call thee not. Lie down again. Drop down to verse number 8. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time. And he rose and he went to Eli and said, He named me. Here am I. For thou didst call me. And Eli perceived that the Lord had called the child. So three times, right here in Shiloh, God calls Samuel while he's laying down, while he's sleeping. Samuel, Samuel, he named me, here am I. 
And then again the second time. Shmuel, Shmuel, Hineni, here am I. And then the third time. Shmuel, Shmuel. And Samuel replies again in Hebrew, Hineni, Hineni, here am I. Well, we know it wasn't Eli that was calling Samuel. And then Eli knew right there and then that it was the Lord that was calling Samuel. And then we see in 1 Samuel chapter 4 that Israel's defeated by the Philistines. And uh, they capture the Ark of the Covenant. Now, mind you, uh, Samuel has some bad news for Eli. You know, because you, re you, uh, you refrain to do anything about your kids. You know, you let them run around ragged. You're not doing nothing about it. God's judgment will come down upon you. Now, Eli knew the consequences, but it didn't really seem to bother him much. He said, okay, it's the Lord's will. Let him do what seems good in his sight. Well, then that's going to unfold in 1 Samuel chapter 4. But in, uh, in uh, 1 Samuel 3.21 it says, And the Lord appeared again in Shiloh, for the Lord revealed himself to Samuel in Shiloh by the word of the Lord. So then when we get to 1 Samuel chapter number 4, the Philistines are gathered together to fight against Israel. In verse number 3, it says, And when the people were coming to the camp, the elders of Israel said, Wherefore hath the Lord smitten us today before the Philistines? Let us fetch the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord out of Shiloh unto us, that when it cometh among us, it may save us out of the hand of our enemies. Well, because of disobedience among the people, you know, God was allowing the Israelites to be defeated. So they said, listen, God is allowing this to happen to us, so why don't we go to the tabernacle at Shiloh and let's fetch the Ark of the Covenant. Let's bring the Ark of the Covenant into battle. And the moment they see the Ark of the Covenant, the Philistines are going to flee for their very lives. Listen, if God is in the Ark of the Covenant, then guess what? That's a pretty special box right there. That's a powerful box right there. And God's going to give the victory. But listen, if we're living in disobedience and we're outside the will of the Lord, and if God is not in that box, listen, all you have is an empty box. It's going to do you absolutely no good. But the Israelites were not realizing that. So then it says, so the people went to Shiloh that they might bring forth thence the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord of hosts, which dwelleth between the cherubim. And the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, were there with the Ark of the Covenant of God. Well, of course, we all know the rest of the story. Uh, Israel is defeated. The Philistines win the battle. And Eli's two sons, Hophni and Phinehas, are killed in battle with the Philistines. Eli hears the bad news. And Samuel's prophecy is about to come to pass. The Philistines capture the ark. 30,000 Israelites are dead. And so are Hophni and Phinehas, Eli's son. The ark of the covenant has been captured by the Philistines. And then we see in 1 Samuel 4.12. And there ran a man of Benjamin. As, as a matter of fact, we are right now in the tribal area of Benjamin. As my wife and I were driving up here from Jerusalem, all you see were signs, the Benjamin region, when the area, the tribal area of Benjamin, absolutely, actually we are in right in the thick of the so-called West Bank, which biblically is Judea and Samaria. And there ran a man out of Benjamin, out of the army, and came to Shiloh, the same day with his clothes rent and earth upon his head. He gives... Eli, the bad news. The Bible says Eli fell backward and broke his neck. And Eli died in Shiloh. Samuel would now be raised up by God right here in Shiloh to be a prophet to the people of Israel. It would be Samuel that would anoint Saul to be the first king. Of Israel. Saul was a Benjamite. 
So he would be the first king of Israel. He was a good start, but he turned out to be a bad finish. So then God would remove Saul, and then he would raise up a young shepherd boy, born in the city of David, Beit Lechem in Hebrew. This would be Israel's second king, Melech David. This would be King David. And it would be David, it would be King David himself that would unite the tribes. And then when he was anointed king, he would go to Hebron, establish his headquarters there for about seven and a half years. And then from Hebron, he would move his base of operations as king to Jerusalem. And he would reign in Jerusalem for some 33 and a half years. He conquers Jerusalem from the Jebusites. And it was David 3,000 years ago, at around 1,000 BC, that David would make Jerusalem the capital of Israel. We see that Israel in 1 Samuel chapter 5 would be the political capital. And then in chapter 6, it would be the spiritual capital. And that would be, ladies and gentlemen, the capital of the Jewish people even some 3,000 years later. December 7th, 2017, President Donald Trump recognizes Jerusalem as the capital of the state of Israel. My wife and I are staying in an apartment uh, there in Jerusalem. We had no idea that the U.S. Embassy in Jerusalem was only two blocks down. I mean, it's just absolutely, I mean, what a treat that was for us. And of course, we ended up visiting the U.S. Embassy there in Jerusalem. But it was 3,000 years coming that a U.S. president would recognize Jerusalem as Israel's capital and would move our embassy from Tel Aviv right there to Jerusalem. But we also know that there was another king who would be born in Bethlehem. Beit Lechem, which is Hebrew for the house of bread. Beit, house, Lechem, bread. Jesus would be born in Bethlehem. As prophesied in Micah chapter 5 and verse number 2. Thou Bethlehem Ephratah. Micah had to be specific because there are two Bethlehems in Israel. A Bethlehem in the north in the Galilee and a Bethlehem in the south of Judea. That Bethlehem in the south of Judea would be called Bethlehem Ephratah. So Micah had to be very, very specific. This other king would be born in Bethlehem, the house of bread. And that's the reason why in John 6.35, Jesus said, Ani shel lechem chai. I am the bread of life. And yet, he, he mentions the word bread 12 times. Read it. I've circled it. 12 times in John chapter number 6. How many pieces of bread were on the table of showbread? 12. Represent the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Here we are at Shiloh. This is where the tabernacle stood for 350 years. This is where the capital of Israel first began. Right here at Shiloh. Of course, we know that the Philistines destroyed Shiloh. They destroyed the tabernacle. But God says, I'm going to have them make me a house that I will dwell in. And then, of course, out of David's loins would come Melech Shlomo, King Solomon. Solomon would be the one to build the first Jewish temple. Second Chronicles 6.6, 6, God says, I have chosen Jerusalem that my name might be there forever. Solomon builds the Beit HaMikdash. Solomon builds the house of the Lord. Well, that temple was destroyed in 586 B.C. After the Babylonian captivity, the Jews come back. After a little bit of laziness there, they build the second temple. Herod comes on the scene at around 37 B.C. Herod enlarges Zerubbabel's temple. Now it's called Herod's temple. That temple was destroyed by the Romans in 70 A.D. As prophesied by Jesus in the Olivet Discourse in Matthew 24 and Luke 19, 41 through 44. Well, there's no temple in Jerusalem today. 
but of course in the Bible prophecy there will be a third temple and that will be called the tribulation temple that will stand on the most sacred piece of real estate on earth today which would be the Temple Mount in Jerusalem but then the Bible talks about a fourth temple and that temple would be the millennial temple spoken of by Ezekiel chapters 40 through 46 covering 202 detailed verses concerning the Messiah's temple. Jesus himself is going to build that temple. He ain't going to hire any construction crew. He himself is going to build that fourth temple. We know that based on Zechariah chapter 6 verses 12 and 13. He's going to build that temple. That temple will also stand on the Temple Mount during the Millennial Kingdom for 1,000 years. We know it's going to be 1,000 years because Revelation 20, 2 through 7 tells us six times 1,000 years. It mentions that phrase six times 1,000 years. So being here at Shiloh, this place, ladies and gentlemen, we are in the center part of the state of Israel. This is where the Jewish prophet Samuel was called by God. This is where the Israelites settled when they came into the land under Joshua. We know that Mount uh, Gerizim and Mount Ebo are not too far from where we are. And of course Joshua had six tribes on Mount Gerizim, six tribes on Mount Ebo. Mount Gerizim, the mountain of blessings. Mount Ebo, the mountain of curses. And Joshua said, if you obey the Lord and you keep his commandments, then all the blessings will come upon you, the blessings of Mount Ebal. But if you disobey the Lord, then all the curses that are on Mount Ebal will come upon you. Obviously Israel didn't obey as they said they were going to do. And all of this calamity came upon them. The northern kingdom of Israel went into Assyrian captivity in 722 BC. And then down the road, her sister Judah will go into the Babylonian captivity in 586 BC. But God made promises. They would, he would one day regather the Jewish people from the four corners of the earth. Would bring them back into the land the second time. There was a first diaspora and then there was a first aliyah of the Jewish people coming back into the land after the Babylonian captivity. There was a second diaspora, 70 AD, when the Romans destroyed Jerusalem, the Jews were scattered to the four corners of the earth. And God made promises that he would bring the Jews back. That's what he said in Ezekiel 37, the dry bones vision. Also in Isaiah chapter 11, verses 10 through 12, that he would regather the Jews from all the nations of the world. He even mentions those nations. All the nations of the world. And will bring them back into their own homeland. And that was fulfilled according to Isaiah chapter 66 verses 7 and 8. Shall a nation be born at once? Well, May 14th, 1948. The rebirth of the state of Israel. And then 70 years later after that, May, May 14th, 2018, President Donald Trump recognizes Jerusalem as Israel's capital. The nations of the world don't like that, especially the Arab nations of the world. But that's telling me, ladies and gentlemen, that the stage is set. The actors are getting into position, and the curtain is about to roll up on the end time drama, knowing that the next main event on God's calendar of events will be the rapture of the church, which could even be today. We don't know the day, and we don't know the hour. Being here at Shiloh for the very first time reminded me of that tabernacle that was here for 350 years and then later on the first temple and then the second temple and then according to Bible prophecy a third temple and then a fourth temple. That would be Messiah's temple. God will keep his promises not only to the church but he will also keep his promises to Israel. And the church has not replaced Israel. God has a program for Israel and he has a program for the church. Neither usurping the other. God will indeed 
keep his promises. Well, we're coming to you from biblical Shiloh in the center part of the state of Israel.